Well, I welcome you to our midweek encouragement. This is a short devotional that is is meant to just uh, encourage you for the remainder of the week ahead. And uh, I invite you to turn with me if you have uh, access to a Bible or a, a Bible app uh, to Mark chapter 9. That's where we're going to be first, is in the ninth chapter of Mark. And then also in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, Luke the seventh chapter. So Mark nine and Luke seven is where we're going to be. In Mark nine, uh, it opens that chapter opens with an event uh, known as the Transfiguration, and so Jesus takes three of his of his closest friends or closest followers and invites them to go with him up on a mountain. And there he uh, undergoes this change, this transfiguration. And then uh, that, vi- that event is recorded in detail in uh, some of the Gospels. And then they're, they're coming down the mountain. And then uh, we get to the next event. And they can see as they're, as they're approaching where they're going to rejoin uh, the rest of the Apostles. Uh, they, they notice there's some commotion going on, and uh, and what has happened is uh, Jesus, uh, you know, disciples have uh, have tried to to heal this boy uh, who is struggling, and uh, and so it, there, there's some commotion going on, and so we'll pick it up in in verse 17 uh, because Jesus. Uh, his, his asking, you know, as he approaches, he knows, here's some arguing. And so he says, you know, what are you all arguing about? So verse 17, a man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he, has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. And I'm going to stop right there because... Jesus is getting a little frustrated. I think he's frustrated at his his disciples. Uh, and, and we find it, I'm going to skip on down to verse 29 for just a second, because uh, verses 28 and 29, after the disciples get Jesus, they're back inside somewhere, and, and they say, now, why couldn't we drive it out? What's the problem? And he says, this kind can only come out by prayer. Well, what does it take to have a prayer life? It takes a certain amount of faith, doesn't it? And so, and so that's why when Jesus is, is sort of indignant here and says, you know, how long am I going to hang out with y'all? You know, how long am I going to put up with you folks that just don't seem to have enough faith? And, uh, and so uh, then in, in his, his conversation with the father of the boy that, that's possessed, uh, you know, Jesus takes issue with uh, within uh, the latter part of verse 22 where the Father says, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And so right there, verse 23, and, and you know, this we don't see this too often from Jesus, but boy, he just gives it right back to the Father and says, if you can, you know, you're, you're talking as if, you, as if to say you're talking to the Son of God here. Yeah, actually, you know, it's God in the flesh. You know, Father, Son, Spirit, they're all on equal footing. As hard as that is for us to wrap our minds around sometime. But you know, he's saying, you know, if you can, well, of course I can. And, uh, and so uh, the, the Father uh, 
response, responds in verse 24 and says, it says, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me to overcome my unbelief. Now, that may seem like a bit of a, of a contradictory statement right there. He's saying, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. And so it's like, wait, do you or don't you? Do, do you believe or don't you believe? But see, I think this man represents a lot of us. Because so many of us, I think, we have faith. But we also struggle sometimes with a degree of doubt. And so, and so I think this man really, uh, this man really represents so many children of God. Because he's saying, you know, yes, I believe, as if to say, I have a, a certain degree, maybe even a significant degree of faith. But God, please help me to make my faith better, to make my faith stronger. Because I still, at times, struggle with some degree of doubt. That's what I hear the man saying here. And the last thing I want to look at over in uh, Luke chapter 7, uh, I want to uh, begin with verse 18 uh, in Luke chapter 7. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowd say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others uh, that that one of the prophets uh, of long ago has come back to life. But who do you say I am, he asked. Uh, you know, what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell anyone. I'm not in the right spot. I am not in the right spot. I'm sorry. Uh... No, I'm supposed to be in Luke 7, and I marked Luke 9. No wonder that wasn't sounding right. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're just going to roll with it right here. Okay. So, verse 18 of Luke 7. We'll get it right here. Bear with me, folks. John's disciples told him about all these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. And so John is in prison, and so he's got some of his, uh, some of his followers, his disciples, uh, are there with him. And, uh, and John is obviously struggling with some doubt here. Okay, just like the father of the boy that was possessed that we saw uh, over in Mark chapter 9, uh, we're seeing this here in Luke 7 with, with John the Baptist. And here's what's significant uh, about this, because this is what Jesus says about John the Baptist. In Luke 7, let's skip down to verse 24, or pick back up with verse 24. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? And he's referring to where uh, large crowds went out to hear John preach uh, in, in the, by, by the Jordan River. Uh, a reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? He asked a third time. 
A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John. That's the high regard that Jesus has for John, also known as John the Baptist. That of someone born of a woman, there is no one greater than John. And here's where I'm going with all this. Just as the man of the demon-possessed son struggled with some doubt, here even John, whom Jesus describes as of someone born of a mortal birth, there is no one on the planet greater. And even John is struggling with doubt. His, his disciples are attending to him because that's what they had to do in prisons back then. If someone was going to get fed, uh, it had to be friends, family members, people they knew that would come to visit them and bring them some food. And so they probably brought him some food and some provisions. And, and now and he's saying, you know, guys, I've been thinking. Uh, go, find, go find Jesus of Nazareth. Go find him. And ask him, is he the Messiah? Is he really the one we've been looking for? Or should we expect someone else? And so, and so when you have those moments where your faith seems kind of weak, where you don't feel like your faith quite measures up to what it should, I want you to be encouraged that whether it's an everyday person like we read about in Mark 9, or whether it's what Jesus calls the greatest guy ever born, uh, that, that, that those moments of weakness, those moments of struggle, those moments of doubt are natural. They're going to happen. Don't beat yourself up about that. I want you to be encouraged by this. That when you've had those moments where your faith wasn't exactly what you felt like it should have been, know that you're not alone. Whether it's the preacher at the Hohenwald Church of Christ, or a man who got to meet Jesus in the flesh, or a man who, uh, whose ministry was to prepare everybody for the ministry of Jesus that we all struggle with doubt at some time or another. I invite you to pray with me. Holy Father, forgive us when our faith is weak at times. Father, I pray that you just help us uh, to be people who, uh, who, like the man we read about in Mark's Gospel, that we were willing to say, I have belief, but Father, please help me with the times when my, my belief and my faith isn't everything it should be. Father, help us to grow our faith into something that is just massive, a faith that can move mountains. That is the prayer, Father, that I have for myself. That is the prayer that I have for everyone in our church family, in our community, or anyone the world over who might tune in to this YouTube video and watch this, Father. I pray a blessing on them. Help us, Father, to grow our faith. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you for the remainder of this week and the days ahead.